reckon right. that? Do you reckon that'll do? I'll smack you in the face with it. Shooting, filming, ready, going. <laughs> I think you do it like that, so it looks like he's beef. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, wah. <laughs> all right, welcome to this week's Dirt Shed show. We've got all the usual stuff this week. We've got news from all the mountain bike events around the world. We've got Tweet of the Week and our caption contest. As you'll notice, it's myself and Mark this week. Rob and Martin are off, don't know what they're doing. Yeah, and also on the show, we've got a phone-in from Matt Simmons after his race in Andorra last weekend. And, Neil, what's the theme this week? The theme is training this week, Mark. Oh, training. <laughs> Which way's the vet? Because these swans are sick. <laughs> yeah, I hope, well, I don't say to that. <laughs> <laughs> It's fair to say when I started racing down as a youth, I didn't really enjoy training. I just rode my bike, but I definitely started to embrace it a bit more. And when I raced in Giro, I tended to put more time into turbo sessions, things like that. And you really see the difference. Obviously, you know, what's the old saying? You nev never gets easier, you just go faster. You really notice that with racing. And downhill guys and girls nowadays are full on athletes, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was just kind of the same as you, like my training really evolved. and. In the last few years racing, it was like really a structured week where you had to hit all this routine. And I, I really enjoyed it towards the end. But, you know, you race a World Cup these days, there might be 10, 12 guys on the same second. So you, if you can get that little bit of an advantage, which, you know, at the, the last 30 seconds of the racetrack, you could win it yeah. just by being that little bit fitter. So Let us know what you do, if you train or if you just ride your bike for fun. Stick it in the comments down below. We'd love to know what you get up to. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Let us know what um, what you do. Intervals, maybe. I don't know. Do you know intervals? No, not anymore. Oh. Right, on to news of the week. Come on then. What? Mountain bike news, Mark. Thanks for the comments last week on the legends. I think John Tomac's name came up a lot of times. I'll definitely agree with that. But one I'd like to throw in there is Tracy Mosley. She's Downhill world champion, twice Enduro World Series winner, and she's a really good role model for girls out there. And now she's trying her hand at cyclocross, I believe. Yeah, really talented girl on the bike. Cool. Yeah, she's definitely done a lot for female mountain biking in the UK, for sure. Talking um, about another legend, we've got Steve Pete was running the Steel City Downhill race the weekend. Super popular grassroots race. Really good. Massive turnout. Yeah, really, really cool. And uh, I don't know whether you've seen any of the footage, but it's get big crowds. Yeah, so I spoke to Steve yesterday and he sent over a few stats from his race. They were uh, pretty comical, some of them. Um, eight broken collarbones. It's quite a lot, I think, for a Dana race. It's one person or multiple people? No, I think it was multiple people. You'd... Um, 900 litres of Petey's Pale Ale drunk. Do you drink 900 litres of beer? Yeah. A good weekend's work, that is, isn't it? <laughs> 300 cowbells, 70 ladies racing, which is really good turnout. Um, 54 first time competitors. It's a grassroots event attracting new people to the sport. That's really cool. Um, the races are uh, ages ranging from 10 to 72. So your granddad was going down the old Neil. Um, one World Cup champion, Josh Bryceman, turned up, won the race, and one pair of crutches, which was. Petey stumbling around on them. The free ride guys have been busy over in Switzerland at the Rocket Air slope style competition. 10,000 Swiss francs up for the winner. I'm not sure how much that is. Sounds like a lot. Might not be a lot, Mark. Who knows? Is it chocolate? Did I get your chocolate bar? Probably would. It's quite expensive, Switzerland, though. Mm -hmm. um, Thomas Gen on one with tricks that include a cork 720 in a decade. I like a decade. That's the old school. Swing yourself around the bars, but it's pretty cool. I, uh, yeah, I watched the video of his run yesterday. It's pretty impressive. Dovey Enduro took place last weekend. That's a bit of an old school Enduro, one big lap. Looked really wet, some really bad rainstorms, I think, super muddy. Um, Dan Atherton was doing it. I asked him how he got on via Twitter and he said, got smoked, no excuses. So it must have been a pretty hard event for him to get smoked. I have heard it's an awesome event and really popular. The DVO Downhill Cup took place in Andorra, which is the track for this year's World Champ. So a few of the big players went out there get a bit of sneaky practice, check the track out, and obviously they've got a little bit of time now to prepare themselves for that. So the women's race was won by Miriam Nicole, pretty close to Manon Carpenter. She was just two seconds in front of her, but that's pretty impressive. Manon has been really strong the last year, definitely. She's been winning a lot of World Cups, obviously a world champ, so good result there for Miriam. She seems to be riding well and also riding a, a common sal, which is yeah. 
That's Remy Tyrion rides one of those and he won the men's race. So Minar was second, just a couple of seconds back on Remy. And then Matt Simmons was in third, so a good result for, for him. Um, getting some practice in for that event too. Um, we're actually going to speak to Matt and get a bit of an insight on his planning towards that race and what he felt like at the weekend. So yeah, let's have a chat with Matt. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here he is. Here he is. That's good timing, isn't it? Old Simmons. Hello. <laughs> so how was the track? Did you change your bike very much with, you know, with the track in mind? Slide the stanchions through a bit more to raise the front end up. Um, also with the Fox 40s, we played, played around with them until I got comfy. But um, I think on that on this type of track as well, because it was still quite low me, um, tyre choice was quite important really. I mean, it was quite dry, but, but we were running spikes, all, all three of us. Um, any special things that you're going to be working on for Worlds? Plenty more time riding on the downhill bike. On I mean, it was a long course, and that was another good thing we got out of that weekend. I mean, we, we packed the runs in more than what I, more than what I would ever do on a race weekend. Um, it almost help us prepare for these next few tracks we've got coming up because they're quite long. Nice one. Cheers, Matt. Well done for your result and we'll try and catch you at Fort William, hopefully. Yeah, good luck for the rest of the season, mate. All right. See you, boys, soon. Time for shout-outs this week. Yeah, I was checking out Vital MTB and they've got a feature on elusiveness of speed where there's an interview with Aaron Gwynn. He talks about trying to get back to that dominance of 11 and 12. Um, it's quite cool, actually, of like what he's mentally thinking and stuff, so worth a read. Yeah, it's cool. We really liked it. It's a bit different, not the sort of normal questions you get in those sort of interviews. Another really cool thing is the Art of Balance, a little edit done by the guys at Not Broken. It's got Thomas Bannister, who's uh, had an injury to his arm, which means he can't use it for riding. He's riding a Santa Cruz Bronson with one arm. He's got a steering damper on there, but you should see the stuff he's doing. It's really good, hitting some pretty fast sections, doing some jumps, and it's pretty cool to see somebody with a disability like that still absolutely shredding on a bike. You think like how hard it is mm, to know. actually like ride over an obstacle one-handed, never mind like legitimately ride as well as he is. It's really cool. Yeah, very cool video. Another good video this week comes from Bryn Atkinson riding in Washington in the woods. Makes it look really good fun. That trail looks amazing. Yeah, I believe he's based out in Washington now with his wife, Jill. What's pretty impressive about Bryn is how he's battled adversity and come back from some really nasty injuries. So to see him riding like that again is pretty cool. Yeah, I actually saw him at Sea Otter, caught up with him there, and he said that he's actually backing off the racing a little bit and putting more effort into the videos, and it shows. It's really good. Mark, stop faffing around on Instagram. Anyway, Instagram, I'm going to recommend some people to follow this week. I follow Duncan Philpot, he's a guy from the UK, goes to all the races, takes some really good photos, so nice mountain bike photos, but also if you want to keep up to date with events, follow him. Yeah, and I've been having a look at Matt Jones, he's a slope style rider, does some really cool stuff at home where he's local spot at Woburn, and also from contests like he was in Switzerland at the weekend competing there. Yeah, so don't forget to follow those guys. Um, the links will be in the description below. And also you can follow us at Global Mountain Bike Network. We put up some instas of us on set um, doing stupid things from time to time. Right, Neil, can you help me? I've been struggling to set up my tubeless system. I can't get them to inflate. Well, Mark, funny you say that. Tech of the Week is going to help you out with that. This comes via Factory Jackson this week and they're taking a look at this air shot system. It's basically a canister that you can use your normal trap pump to just pump up up to 160 psi and then you let that go into your tyre and it gives you a real strong burst of air that helps to seal that tyre. Right, why would you use this and say not a compressor? Well, compressor you can get lots of pressure with, but you don't get that blast of air like you do with this one, you know, big pressure system. Right. Also, it's nice and lightweight, you can take that abroad with you if you wanted and you have to drag a compressor around. All you need is one of these and a trap pump, and hopefully, Bob's your uncle. No, you probably shouldn't check in your compressor, should you, onto a plane? No. Right, on the channel this week, Saturday, that's tomorrow, we've got Dan Atherton's Pro Bike Check. I saw him at Sea Otter checked out his enduro bike and got the man himself to talk me through it. Then on Monday. Tuesday is our top 10 mountain bike accessories. So then on Wednesday, it's how to do all day rides, what to pack, what to take, best little bits of tips and advice for that. Thursday is tire pattern explained. And then on Friday. 
Back again, it's the Dirt Shed Show. Of course it is. Who's there next week? Who knows? And now onto the caption competition. It's that lovely picture from last week of Rob with his bike and not a lot else. Um, here's one of the good ones that I picked out from Chris King, 1993. The original downhill skin suit. Mm. Not that aero though, is it? He's pretty he, hairy. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah, I wouldn't like to see him ride down the hill and that either. But the winner is Evan Shart. No, he didn't. What are you on about? Evan says, wheel sizes weren't the only thing smaller back in the day. No idea what he's talking about there, but pretty funny. So well done to Evan, you win a t-shirt. So let us know your details, send us a message and we'll make sure that gets to you. Get you a new t-shirt like these. What about caption this week, Mark? That's a good picture. What would you say for that one? That is an excellent picture. That's a flipping good caption, Mark. I don't think that one's going to be beaten. Who egged him on to do that? I think the first one was better. Can you leave it that now? You want another one? Leave us a comment down below. Shut him up. But leave us a caption down below. Winner wins a t-shirt. So that's it for this week's Dirt Shed show. You can click up here for our top 10 tech at Sea Otter. And click down here for how to do rocky descents. Or click on us to subscribe to GMBN. Yeah, of course, click on us to subscribe. Well, Neil, I think that was an excellent show. That's pretty a while, I suppose, yeah. Well, Neil, don't be too hard on yourself. You are a good egg. My God, this look looks expensive. Well, that's all, yokes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it?